another magazine recently had uh, fa has faced a new challenge, uh, which is uh, which is very exciting to tell, not only to show but also to tell to tell the story behind, because it's not. Uh, well then, well, then the other crisis happened, which was that I start, I made another magazine 10 years ago to sort of encourage people to slow down and, you know, make a magazine that was collectible, um, but still, you know, referencing um, what was a, a time capsule, really, of, 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 of how we saw culture. And I kind of felt like it was still becoming disposable. Like, it still, it, 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 it really wasn't, I wanted to capture that idea of really of really being with the experience of being with a magazine. Um, what happened was, should we should we get it out? I'd like to Come turn on. it on. Should be charged. Let's see. I remember when I was a kid, I got a copy of a magazine called National Geographic, and it was the 100th anniversary issue, and it was a hologram cover, and it was just mind-blowing. They did this hologram front cover, and I think it was like a picture of the globe, and it was totally three-dimensional, and I hel held it in my hands, and I was looking at it at all angles, and it transported me into the dimensions of the magazine, and it made me also read the entire copy from cover to cover. It was a sort of like, it was such a, uh, a wonderful, um, um, you know, teleportation, if you like. Um, so magazines have always been this kind of like, magazines are time capsules, we know that. They capture, they slice a moment in time and deliver it out there. Uh, but magazines always have the ability to be teleportation tools. So, you know, a magazine is a place where it takes you into another reality. Um, Magazines like Interview Magazine would transport me from being a kid in England to downtown New York. You know, suddenly I was there, I was hanging out with Warhol, I was hanging out with Glenn O'Brien, I was hanging out with Blondie and Patti Smith, because that magazine allowed me to teleport into that, into that, into that, into that mental and cultural space that was being curated for me. Um, this is more of a time machine, um, in a way, and a cover of a magazine shouldn't move. Um, it shouldn't do that when you hold it, right? Well, whatever, it's gone blank, but yeah. It shouldn't go blank when you hold it. Did it run out of batteries? Here it is. It's on a loop. Um, it was always a dream of mine to do this kind of, um, be the first fully LED you know, full cover, mo 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 moving screen. And um, it was very complicated to do. The idea came about because um, this, is a, this is an issue that's dedicated to Alexander, not dedicated to, but it's inspired by Alexander McQueen. So what happened was there was, um, when we were planning this issue, Savage Beauty was coming from, um, coming to the VNA. Um, Savage Beauty is the exhibition um, that, celebrates the, is a retrospective of, of the, the work of Alexander McQueen. Uh, he was a collaborator of mine, he was um, a fashion director of Days to Confused, and he worked on uh, some special projects for another magazine. So we had a very close association to him. Um, we did three covers, one about the past, which took um, archive collection of his, and we re-photographed it on um, uh, I can't remember now, but we re we 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 photographed the archive. Um, we did present, so we did the current collection, and then we had Sarah Burton from McQueen make an outfit specially for Rihanna for future. So we had past, present, future. We had three different unique covers, and then we did this for the future. So it really felt like you were it was a window to a new possibility. How did you work on this? Like what? At what extent technology? It was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened in this nightmare? Like the prop, the biggest, the biggest challenge is the video or um, the no, nightmare was 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 everything. So first of all, um, looking at um, e-ink digital paper, looking at kind of what is possible in terms of putting content onto a moving cover. Um, E-ink and digital paper were quickly ruled out. There was issues with um, 
e-ink, which was a, like a two-second refresh rate of the video. It was much cheaper to do. This LED is much more expensive. Um, we had a number of consultants working on it. I talked to a number of technology companies. I went to some of the big companies like Toshiba, Philips, etc., and then I went to sort of technology technology consultants who maybe were freelancers in the field and were doing research in the field and could give me information. Everybody was excited by the challenge, you know, but the reality was everyone was coming back to me and basically the best I got was um, it was impossible now but it might be possible in the future and um, you might as well buy some iPads and rip them up and stick them on the cover of the magazine was kind of like the best solution, you know? I was like, well, well that's not the point, you know? And I then met some, I, I, we worked for nine months on it and I gave up um, and I was absolutely defeated um, by uh, making this a reality. Um, that same day I went to a web conference in Dublin. Um, I was at um, a, f a dinner. The guy opposite me was a a uh, guy who had a company called PCH, and they are a hardware manufacturer in China. He also has a lab in San Silicon Valley, and he's called Silicon Valley's go-to guy for hardware. So he makes stuff for Apple and Beats and these kind of companies. And I said, uh, holy shit, um, I can't believe I'm sitting opposite you. Um, I said, I know a I've read a bit about your company. He says, yeah, my company motto is, and he kind of boasted to me, he said, if you can imagine it, we can make it. And I was like, okay, I've imagined this. Can you make this? And I showed him my phone, because I had renders on my phone. You know, we'd kind of done mock-ups of what we wanted it to look like and that we were taking to people. And um, he asked me a lot of questions about what it should do and how it should behave and what emotion he wanted, I wanted to convey and why I was doing it. And it wasn't, he didn't start with the technical questions. It was really interesting. Um, he wanted to make sure that I had a very clear vision of how I wanted it to behave because he understood that once he opened that Pandora's box that this could just go on for a really long time. And um, I think part of him coming to the table was he realized there was a very clear vision of, what this, of, what, of how this should behave. Um, we could have put 20 minutes of, of video on this. Um, we could have put about... Um, four hours of music. When, if I was 20 now, when I was 19 when I launched Dazed, if I was the same age now, I would have wanted to use all of that, right? I would have just gone, let's just, you know, fill it up fill with it. everything, yeah. right? And then it wouldn't have worked. Like, the illusion of, the reason it works is because it's, it's very fixed on her portrait, you know? It's, it's, it's staying close to the codes of a cover, and it's just moving in a very subtle way so it creates that kind of holy shit that shouldn't move it's got that kind of magic trick to the content and if we'd have just put it if we'd have just put a pop promo on there you'd think it's a screen you wouldn't think it was a cover of a magazine so this was kind of an important part of the of the editing process was to bring something to it that 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 could create that illusion um what happened was, and this is the reality, is um, they had a rapid prototype, prototype um, um, space in um, San Francisco. And this is a really, really interesting part of, 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 of the story for students especially. When I started doing magazines um, in the 90s, we were the kids of desktop publishing revolution, right? So we inherited the Apple Mac. That gave me the license to print a magazine because, you know, suddenly the means of entry into publishing came rapidly down. Now that is happening in hardware. The same deal is happening in hardware. So it's uh, the, the barrier to entry to actually making and manufacturing technologically enabled um, products is 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 the new kind of there's a new paradigm there which which is why the market's opened up for wearables why is why the market's opened up for uh, design uh, technology it's cheaper. technology enabled design um, smart design smart objects etc the internet of things all of that kind of stuff that Bruce was talking about and um, maker studio plus rapid prototyping studio allows entrepreneurs to go from the back of a napkin to market in under a year I mean, we did this in four months. It's extreme. This would never have been possible in another time or age. So this is a window into, the possi uh, in, into a future possibility. It's a limited edition. It costs £125. It is expensive. It's not really 
you know, it, it, today it couldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be affordable for a mass market magazine to do it on an, on a, on an, on a, on an extreme uh, run. Um, but I wanted it to be a collectible because I wanted to do something that was different. I wanted to make, um, I wanted to make something that, okay, this was the other thing, right? Everybody said um, the, the argument of print versus digital. So, you know, um, the web is killing, is killing magazines. Um, you know, where do you stand on the argument of, of print versus digital? And, and I was like, I wanted to do something that kind of answered that by making print digital. Which is a bold move, I mean. Yeah. It's courageous. And there is a magazine here, and it's print, and it's kind of ancient and modern coming together, right? And I really wanted to create what I call digital scarcity. There's only 1,000 of these. There's an album on here. Um, the album is made by the guy that did all the soundtracks for Alexander McQueen from the first ever show to now. Um, he's called John Gosling. He's a sound designer of, well, he worked closely with Alexander McQueen and now works with Sarah Burton. And he did, he took, he created um, a studio re-recording of one of the classic shows and then he remixed it uh, as well. And so there was a, a past, present, future element to the sound. It's a 45-minute album track, and you can't take it off. Like, you can't download it. You can't share it. It doesn't go on SoundCloud. You can't, you know, it's only on the object, which I really like that idea. You can plug it into your speakers. You can put headphones on it, but it only exists there. So digital scarcity versus digital ubiquity was part of the kind of luxury twist, well. you know? And it's really not the Internet of Things. Uh, it's just thing. It's, no, it's, it's not connected thing. at all. There's no Bluetooth. There's nothing on it. It's just a thing. There's not the Internet of anything there. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole game now. So the idea is that it's also a challenge. It's also a propagation to the industry. So one of the th reasons why PCH got involved was they said, if we do this, which we have done now, there's going to be... Th people can see a, co uh, 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 a consumer demand for it. The industry will put more into R&D. Um, and that's exactly what's happening. I mean, the amount of feedback from the industry that I've had and PCH has had, and the amount of dialogue that's happened around this in the media. I mean, we're talking about, we got the front page of the Financial Times. I mean, we were getting, we were getting in uh, lots of blogs, we were getting an, in lots of news media globally, and um, it started a debate about what's next. Is there thinner um, options? Is there flexible paper, um, can we have, um, you know, can it be updated, can it be connected, um, which screen manufacturers are making it um, to different dimensions and sizes, um, and all of them, uh, you know, and, and many of them have contacted us, and there's been actually, some of the more interesting ones have come from, not from the big players, but have come more from um, smaller um, garage um, makers who've actually found, uh, who, who've innovated some, some new um, um, materials. I mean, graphene and things like that, you know, there's a lot of materials out there which, um, which can hold a lot, of, um, um, a lot of information at a very, very, very thin basis, but uh, it's the cost of putting it into this thing. It's coming, it's coming, it will come.